Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And uh, we're going to be talking today about Jordan Hendricks, uh, why he has been backed at number 10 for the Spring Box. This is the prize selection of the week and it's definitely gotten social media a buzz with question marks, a lot of debate and uh, people are now starting to bring up the reasons uh, why he might have been selected to the head of a Mon Ebok, Sasha Feinberg, Gomez Zulu, ahead of a Sia Masuku. And uh, there's two glasses going to be making reference to, but just talking a little bit about why Jordan Hendricks uh, is being backed at 10. And uh, I do feel quite vindicated um, in, in what I've been saying for the past few years because I've been saying for a long time that, that Jordan Hendricks uh, looks world class in the making. You know, from under 20 levels, you know, he was playing for the Lions, he was the senior number 10 for the Lions. And then he went and played SA under 20 at the same time, came back to the Lions as, as the number 10. And I mean, it's at an under-20 level, he looked, it was childish. He looked like a senior player playing, you know, in division below. You know, he looked like a different, different level. And uh, he's looked comfortable at senior level for a long time. And it's easy to look at his last season and say, oh, maybe he didn't have a bad season. We didn't play. He was benched by the best player in the URC. That, that's basically what happened. Um, because Snare Nahamba did get named the Vodacom URC player of the season. Um, so, well, it's the best player of the season. Um... So that's that's the reality, you know. He he, it wasn't even a case of Henderson playing that badly. He just um, he's just been absolutely phenomenal, and uh, he's you know, um, and he had to now sort of learn to come off the bench for Snell and Hamba, who was just it just changed things for the Lions. The way the Lions played, for example, the way things were going, Snell and Hamba, the way he played the game, just changed everything for the Lions. And as a result, uh, Jordan Henderson, for the first time in his career. At 22 years old had been benched and, and that kind of shows you how good he has been the fact that he's got four seasons i mean you go look at his stats for example you can go look at stats from 20, 20, 2020 to 21 where he came and started playing um in in may 2020 uh, i think it was 21 which is now three years ago at 19 years old you know this is a special player who's been on the radar for a long time and is now getting his opportunity i mean if you look at him for example he is Yet to turn 23 years old, he has 53 appearances for the Lions across URC, Challenge Cup, and Rainbow Cup. So he's basically, take away Rainbow Cup, which is effectively like a, a, a mini Curry Cup, he's almost got 50 professional appearances at 22 years old. I mean, it's mental. It's ridiculous. Um, so he's been playing at this level for a long time. And I want to talk exactly about a couple of stats, which is why he makes such an exciting player. Now, we're talking about a player who can do has got everything in his arsenal. I really, truly believe that. But we're going to be looking at two things today. Uh, obviously, two very key things for a Springbok fly half. Obviously, that being the kicking percentage and, and his ability to kick for goal, which is something that's been under a lot of scrutiny in the last year. For example, with Martin Ebok adding so much to the, the Bok game plan, but struggling when it comes to goal kicking. And uh, we're going to look at something which I think has always been such a trademark of South African fly halves, the defense. South Africa, you know, have very rarely, Monty Liebach, Alton Yankees, if we're being brutally honest, the exception to the rule in terms of having ball playing, um, you know, expansive attacking natured fly halves. And that's not to, to, to disrespect, you know, our previous fly halves, the likes of Amorne Stang, Andre Pollard, Butch James, we won the, we remember, we won a Butch, World Cup with Butch James at 10, who was very much not your attacking flair type fly half, but man, the man was physical. Um, so it's always been such an important trademark of a Springbok number 10 to be able to defend. So let's look at some of the stats, shall we? First thing we'll look at is the defensive stats. This is a graph I put together by uh, a Twitter handle called Captain Springbok. We will tag it down in the bottom um, below. But this tells you a very interesting story of the defense success rates of 9s and 10s in the URC um, this season. Now, this is a big thing a lot of people are talking about with Sinead and Humber not being potentially included, saying that, you know, for number 10... Defense probably not good enough. 60%, the lowest percentage there. I mean, it's not massively surprising. You look at the size of him, and, and I mean, it's heroic when he does try to defend. And he, he's not a bad defender, but as a 10, when you get run into that channel, it's a problem. You know, Nahamba for me could play for the box tomorrow at nine. I wouldn't have any issue with him whatsoever playing um, for the box at nine. 10 is a different story. Take a big look at there's a massive percentage that stands out. First of all, Grant Williams, 92%. Um, so very impressive there. But look at that Jordan Henderson, 94%. And he's defended majority in the season at the 10 and 12 role, where you have to be very good. 94%, competing seven tackles, I'm sorry, a tackle every almost seven minutes, almost eight, basically every eight minutes, you know, the only person that comes anywhere near that in terms of how, how many tackles being completed is Sash Fame Gomezuli, who's competing 77% of his tackles. He's the only one, him and Morning van der Berg are the only two that have competed more than 140 tackles, but I mean, out of almost 150 tackles, he's missed like, like less than 15. He's been absolutely mental, and he is absolutely mental on defense. 
We're talking about a guy who stands at 1.86 and is about 90 kgs. I think he'll, he'll only get a bit heavy. He has bulked up a little bit this season. Um, you know, similar kind of frame to Sash Fame and Gomezulu, who's a similar sort of height, also kind of similar weight. Again, two young players who will probably bulk up as things go. And they're looking to deputize for an Andre Pollard, who's about 1.89 and about 98, almost 100 kgs. We've always had a big fly half, as I said, with the exception of an Alton Yankees and a Marnie Leibok, who are very different profiles. So for me, that is the biggest stat. We're talking about a player who is a phenomenal defender, not even just for a fly half. You don't even have to put a disclaimer. He's a great defender. And that's a portion of his game. When I started watching him early on, I said, this kid's special. First of all, he's got a massive boot, by the way. I mean, in warm-ups and practice and stuff like that, he's, he's there's videos of him knocking over, um, you know, kicks from 70 meters out. He's got a massive boot, you know, um, and it's very useful, especially being at altitude. He's been a massive weapon for the Lions. But again, I, I, he's got, I think he's got an all-around good game. He's got a good pass on him. Um, not as attacking nature, you know, won't play sort of the chips over the top uh, and, you know, maybe sort of those those 50-50 car passes like Snare and Namahamba might. But uh, he's got a good pass on him and, and, and is quite attacking nature compared to some of some other flower halves, but phenomenal defensively. The other big stat is uh, obviously... Um, the, the kicking stats, and uh, that's that's also an interesting one um, because that's something that has obviously been quite uh, contested with regards to, uh, not contested in terms of it being, uh, the, 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 the stats being wrong or anything, but for that being such an important um, stat for uh, for the Springboks. You know, we're talking about uh, a, 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 the reason that a lot of people sometimes don't back uh, Mario Leibach is, is sometimes his goal kicking lets him down. And if, if my Lieber, for example, if, if it had a situation like a Butch James did, where he had Percy Montgomery kicking for goal, no, nobody, nobody would have ever had any, anything to say about what my Lieber's done in a Springbok shirt. That is the only thing that has potentially let him down at times because, you know, there's been no other options and he's had to be the primary goal kicker. Um, and um, it's a fair criticism, but uh, it's also one that, you know, is 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 not the be all and end all. And that's what Jacques Nielba said in the World Cup. They said, you know, is, is this goal kicking going to be an issue? And he said, not if he wins man of the match. And he shrugged his shoulders and said, well, I don't know if you, tell you if you don't like it, but that's the truth. Uh, so let's have a look at Jordan Hendricks. Uh, no, he's not his best season with the boots in hand. Or boots in hand. <laughs> with, off the boot, off the tee. Um, you know, so this season he kicked at uh, 75.9%. So call it 76%. Uh, it puts him just a few percent behind Sia Masuku. Uh, not far behind the likes of Johan Hussein, for example. Um, ahead of Sunday in the Humber, only just in the Humber has kicked well. Um, uh, Pollard sitting at 82%, Chris missing at 86%, and Sasha Femme Gomez at 85.7%. We've all known for a long time that he's a very, very good goal kicker. The one thing I will say about uh, Sasha Femme Gomez is it is a small sample size. He only did attempt 21, for example. Everybody else won over 50. Uh, so Jordan Henderson, who was the second choice kicker at the Lions, and this is also an interesting one because so if you look at the EPCR, um, Challenge Cup, basically, he was the starting number 10 for majority. I think he, I think he didn't start one game at 10. So he was generally the kicker there, um, operate 80%. A lot of the time when he did kick for goal, when the was playing, it was the kicks from distance as well, which I think does slightly skew the stat. Um, but generally, he's a very he's a very good goal kicker. He's worked with Mornay Stain, um, and and he does kick very well. If you look at other, other flowers, for example, Monty Lee, but at the bottom there, it's 72.6%, just above Cohen Bosch, who's had a terrible season and is moving on, which I think is a good thing for him. So the big question is, what does Vasily Rasmus see in him? He sees a 22-year-old that can defend like a demon. He sees a 22-year-old who's physical, is bulked up, and not going to go backwards. He sees a 22-year-old that's got a massive boot and a, and a pretty good cold kicker. He sees a gem in the making. And, you know, a lot of people are upset about Sash Fame and Gonzuna not starting. I don't think it's that surprising. Sash Fame and Gonzuna has not played a single game this season at Fly Half. Not a single game. He did not play a single game for the Stormers at Fly Half last season. If you look at overall, for example, we're talking about somebody who has not played senior rugby at, at 10. He played um, for the 20s at 10, um, but he has not played a senior game starting at 10 in his career. Uh, and that's the reality. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, as opposed to um, uh, Jordan Hendricks, who has played 92% of his games at Fly Half, Sash Fame Gomezulu has played 25% of his games at fly half. So, you know, will he be the future 10? Maybe we'll wait and see. I'll be very interested to see where Sash Fame Gomezulu does settle. You know, has played full back uh, a couple of times and uh, played center the majority of the times. 
Um, so he's, he's an exciting player to watch out for. Um, but I, I don't think it's that surprising. I think it's more surprising people are more surprised that he's ahead of Siemasuku, for example, who's had a great season, or ahead of Amari Libok. But I think if you look at the type of profile that the three marks want, Jordan Henderson ticks every single box, probably even more so than some of the other players, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I think that's why they're going to give him a, give him a go. And we have to wait and see. You know, the nice thing is we've got depth. If he doesn't work out and you give Sash Femme Gomezulu 20 minutes at far half, then you know. If you give Siemasuku time against Portugal, then you know. My Libok, we know what he can do. This is a nice problem to have. It's a very nice problem to have. Um, but I, for one, can understand the thinking. And I think the more you look at it, the more you review. If you just take a step back and look at the last few seasons, Jordan Henderson has earned himself this opportunity. And uh, I'm very keen to see how he goes. Uh, it's exciting. That's the main thing. Be excited. You've got 22-year-old starting at 10 on, on, on Saturday. That's exciting. Um, he's one of the youngest spring mocks ever. Uh, Sachin Gomezuli said to be even younger than him but yeah we are talking about players who i think are in the both will both be in the top 10 younger spring box um i can actually tell you exactly um who the younger springs are as well where is it where is it where is it i had the stats here uh, oh, it'll come to you i'll find it but uh, yeah both of them very much in the sort of that that the that, 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 that younger spring box both of them in there which is exciting to see two young potential 10s both of them can play at 12 as well both of them play at 15 if need be jordan hendrickson has played um, at fullback and has played at inside centre recently uh, this season. So, yeah, they both have that in their arsenal. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.